Return again. Return again. Return to the land of your soul. Return again. Return again. Return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are born and reborn again. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are born and reborn again. Return again. Return again. Return to the land of your soul. In Judaism, we learn that our mission in the world is to return. There's so much that we can return to. But my father, Rabbi Shlomo Karlibach, said that our mission in this world is to return to our highest self, to return to that place that we were in the other world when we were pure light and pure soul and pure clarity before we came to this world of confusion, of madness, of insecurity, of disappointment. Our mission in this world is to find that place and hold it with both arms and both legs and never let it go. That's the way I grew up. When I was a little girl, my father was never home, ever. And I, when I was eight years old, knew every country code, every city code. I was in possession of his AT&T phone card. And I knew how to call him everywhere in the world. And these are the days way before our cell phones. And I was in my class, and I always had to go to the bathroom, obviously. And I was always running down to the dungeon of the gym in my, in my girl's yeshiva to call my father. And somehow, when I would call the hotel, my father, who always answered me, who still answers me, always answered the phone. I remember this one day, I was eight years old, and I had just learned how to pray the Amida. And we were learning it in chunks. We would learn the first few brachas, then we would stop. And, and I had a question. And I raced down to the dungeon, to the payphone, and he was in Australia. I don't even know where he was. And of course, when I called, my father answered. I said, I have a question. He said, give alt, because that was his answer for everything, <laughs> which was awesome. He made me feel guilty that I hadn't had a Jewish question before. Givalt, it's the best, I didn't even have to ask him, it's the best question in the world. I said, tell me, why when I am davening, do I say Baruch, Ata, Ata, right? And then Hashem. Why am I saying, blessed are you, God? And I'm standing up. Why shouldn't I bow down to God? Givalt, you know, he was so excited. Bless him for all of those times he was excited the best question in the world. He said, the reason that we have to stand up when we say God is this. God wants us to be big. God doesn't want us to be small. The only way that we can serve God is by being our highest self, by being bigger than we are, by standing taller than we are, by returning to ourselves and to that place every moment of our lives. I'm so glad you asked me. He thanked me and thanked me and thanked me. When my father died, it was the worst day. I said that my father was the great umbrella. He was such a good umbrella, I didn't know it was raining. And when he died, I was swept away into the monsoon of a lifetime. I couldn't breathe. 
I couldn't sing. I couldn't exist. Definitely, I could not find my highest self. It's taken me years, years, and I pretended so well. You know what I mean? I, I got so good at publicly pretending to be me. I even fooled myself. Now I stand here. I finally know what he meant when he said, find your highest self. When he said, return again. I know it. I taste it. I can give it to my children. I have a few tips. Because connecting to yourself when you're in the monsoon of brokenheartedness, when you're in the monsoon of loss, is very painful and very hard. So here are my practical tips. My father would say we have to carry Torah in our pockets like cash, like $5 just in case. Maybe, wherever you are, one of these tips will work for you. And if they do, I'm filled with gratitude and thanking God so much and thanking my father for this opportunity. To connect to your highest self, number one, you have to break. You have to break. It says in the Shema, which is probably the most important prayer in our Jewish world, you have to take God's words and you put them on your heart and on your soul. My father said, God can do anything. Why not put them in? Why not put them in? We learn from Reb Nachman and from everybody of worth that the most whole heart is the heart that has been broken. It is the heart that has been broken that is the most capable of reaching that highest self, of loving the world, of finding compassion. You have to bleed so that you can fly. So we say, please God, let my heart break. Please let my heart break. And when my heart breaks and cracks open, may your words fall inside my heart and inside my soul when they sit on my heart, when I crack in half, when I fall down, may you be my comfort. May you bring me light. So my first tip, you gotta let it happen. You gotta break. That's number one. Number two, you gotta cry a lot. You have to cry until you don't think you can breathe anymore because that's when the gates open. A Hasidic story for you. A woman, hundreds of years ago, has one baby. She has no one else in the world. It is her and this one little baby child who is her heart. Then the baby got sick, and every doctor in the world said that there was no hope. And she's racing around, and she has no money, and she has no breath. Then she hears. You must get a blessing from the Halig of Vukar, from the Holy Vukar. He can do it. If he can bless your baby, your baby will be well. She buys a horse. She has no strength. And she runs from one corner of the world to the other to find this rabbi when she finally gets to his home. She falls on her knees in front of him. She can't breathe. She holds up her child. She says, Rebbe, please, heal my child. The Vukar closed his holy eyes. And he looked at her and he said, my friend, I'm so sorry. The gates of heaven are closed. The gates of heaven are closed. And she can't breathe. She can't. This was her. This was her only hope. She grabs her child and she jumps on the horse. And she's running. She's running from herself. She's running from the truth. She's running from her pain. And she's running. Suddenly she hears frantic hoofbeats behind her. She stops. It's the Halig of Ogre. He says, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I told you that the gates of heaven are closed. But you didn't let me tell you that I want to cry with you. I want to cry with you. 
and this holy, beautiful man sat down on the edge of the dusty road with this sick baby in his arms. And he cried. And he cried. And the sun went down and he cried. And the sun came up and he still cried. And we don't know if the baby lived or not. But we know that somehow in that moment, that woman, that baby, that Rebbe, that moment changed everything. Changed everything. Number three, we have to have hope. And we have to believe that love can cure everything. Another personal story. My beautiful father, who is still here, would always play in prisons. This is actually, I should say, this is my most favorite story in the world. My father would say we have to continue to tell our favorite stories because it will keep us young. <laughs> my father would play in prisons all over the world, every city he went to. This one city somewhere in the south, high security. He called up. He said, I'm a rabbi. I'd like to play. Why not? He said, I just have one condition. Everybody must be there. He said, Rabbi, we appreciate your love. We appreciate your gifts. We can have everyone there but one. There is one prisoner. He is serving 10 life sentences back to back. He's in solitary confinement. Nobody goes there. Everyone is afraid. We don't have enough guards. I'm sorry, Rabbi, but he can't be there. My father said, if he's not there, I'm not playing. So somehow that meant something to them, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> they called guards, and it was a whole thing. All the prisoners are brought into this room. And then finally, this one, who everyone fears, guards surrounding him in chains in the back. My father began to sing, and of course, like at all good Shlomo events. Everyone is singing and dancing, and the guards are dancing with the prisoners, and no one knows which is which, of course. And then, of course, as he always did, my beautiful father stood by the door, and he embraced with a full heart every person who left. At the end, after a long time, it was only this one, this one, and the guards. My father stood, and he went right through, and he hugged this man that everyone feared. He hugged him. Then they start to lead him away. He said, stop. Take me back to the rabbi. They bring him back, and he has tears streaming down his face. He said, Rabbi, I've never had a hug like that. And I know I'll never have a hug like that again. And I know that if I had one hug like that, I wouldn't be here right now. Can I have another hug? And my father held him. We cannot give up. We cannot give up knowing that if we love, if we give, if we try, not only will we return to our highest self, but we will bring every human being along with us. And the last thing, always, even if you think you have no voice, even if you think you have no breath, even if you think you have no song in your heart, find one and sing it. And with all of your strength, choose to return again. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, 
return again, return to land of your soul. Thank you.